Hey y'all, it's Jessica at Pretty Prints and Paper, and I'm going to do my first kind of live plan with me. I am going to be setting up my weekly for the upcoming week, so I'm going to walk you through some of my steps that I'm going to take to get myself set up for the week. I'm going to be doing kind of a more simple setup, but I will be using some stickers. It's not going to be completely minimal with pen and highlighter, but I will try to focus on that kind of simple. I do believe in pretty and productive, so I'm going to just incorporate some of these stickers in a simple way. So let's get started. I'm going to be planning for the week of the 4th, that's this upcoming week, and it's going to be my first week back from break, so wish me luck. I am using stickers from Moore Avenue. I love her stickers so much, and she has these simple passion planner sticker sheets and kits that I use with some of the deco for the dailies. I like to coordinate the weeklies with the dailies and just kind of have that theme be consistent through. I don't color code, but I do like to use color to kind of show that each week is passing by. Okay, so next she has these stickers that are meant to cover up certain bars of the to-do lists down here. In order to understand what is going on during that week, I have to use my Google Calendar. And this is where I pull information from to sticker into the week. My favorite pen has honestly been a 0.28 millimeter tip, and I used to use a 0.5 millimeter and sometimes a 0.7, but honestly, once I started switching over to these, the needle nose tip actually makes my handwriting look very nice. Uh, it's still sloppy, but because it's such a fine tip, it doesn't make it look so obviously sloppy. <laughs> Honestly, I never know where to put these, so I just kind of put them in places where I have big expanses of time. <laughs> Whoops. And then there's a bunch of these little flags that you can put that will fit right on the lines here. I think what will make the most difference to me is probably to put some of my routines or my daily tasks that I don't normally think to do in here, especially as I'm trying to establish some new patterns and systems for the new year. Let's try that. So over in the corner here, I like to make this kind of a bar chart with um, the hours that I go to sleep. So I'll highlight in the morning with one of my other favorite planning tools, which is the lightest Tombow pen. It's an N89. It just creates a really, really light shadow. And I will highlight where what time I slept to when I woke up and then be able to do a line chart on top of that if I want to. In the past, I've done productivity or presence. So I think I'll continue doing that because I like having this kind of in view of the whole week. So there's never enough room on here for all the things that I want to write down. So I split this column in half. It lines up perfectly with the two columns here. So on this side of things, I usually do my work lists and I kind of in my head already have it spliced out and I've been putting class work up here for the class that I teach or down here, I'll put my curriculum work and then other admin stuff. And then if there's more stuff I have to do for work, then I'll just continue on here. But it's either one of these two, I'll put my like content creation stuff like filming and art and stuff like that will be one of these two down here. These are for my personal tasks and stuff that I want to do for other people and for stuff at my home. They just happen to have these habit stickers, so I'm trying to fill these out with maybe the most important habits. The thing for me is that if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. And so what's helpful is that I put this on a stand, I put it on an easel, so I see this at all times at my desk because, you know, I don't have to go anywhere. So I'm trying to think of the three major habits that I think will make the most difference or that are the most difficult for me to complete so that when I see it, I will think about doing it. 
For the black, I love using the Uniball Signo, and it is the most opaque white gel pen that I have personally found. It writes kind of thick, so definitely not as thin as the 0.28, but it is a really, really nice opaque gel pen. Really smooth. Okay, so I decided on my daily paragraph. I saw this in Llama Letters, Cindy's video about doing, instead of morning pages, she's going to do a morning paragraph. I don't want to say what time I'm going to do mine, but I'm going to start with just a paragraph in general whenever I feel like it. Uh, moving is obviously something that I've put time and time again, tales all this time, and then sleep by one o'clock. There was a time period where I... <laughs> My habit was sleep by 11, and then it became sleep by midnight, and now it's just out of control. So I'm just going to just hope for the best with sleep by 1 a.m. And then here, I just wanted to put the meals. I um, You can look at my video for the meal matrix, how I do my meal planning, but I typically just make two things a week for myself because it's just me. And so for me, it's helpful just to be like, okay, plotting out, just making sure, and I'm trying to be better about leaving room because honestly... I don't have it down to a science yet, and sometimes I want to feel like eating something else or something I'm not hungry, so just leaving space for that to adjust. And then I'm going to be filling in some of the weekly tasks. What I do here is I have to look at my monthly, and what I want to do is get better about looking at my monthly and looking at what is really, really important for my projects this week so that I can properly prioritize where my energy goes. So this is me brain dumping for the first pass at what I have going on. It's really heavy for curriculum writing and we're flipping some things between semesters. If you don't know, I write curriculum for a course at a university and so there's a lot of things that I need to do for that this upcoming week. Now, what is really typical for me being an Enneagram 2, which is the helper, I think about all the stuff that I have to do for other people first, or if there's a deadline that I owe to somebody, all those things come really easily to me. And then the other stuff that's my own personal development, I always kind of put aside. And so I have to reference back to my moxie life goals that I set. So these are the monthly ones. You can look at my video for the goals that I had talked through and set for myself, but I have to remember to go back to this so that I don't just focus on the stuff that I have to do for other people. All those things that feel urgent always quickly push aside the things that I want to be important. So let me look back at what I wanted to do. This last week, I accomplished some of these things I didn't accomplish this. So I'll bring this over. So I will take a look at these weekly actions and pull more from the monthly goals so that I can spark some ideas as to what I need to make sure I prioritize in my weekly.
And in my bullet journal, I have this future log. This is a way to, for me to capture some of my tasks that I think of. I'm a futuristic person and I'll think about tasks way ahead of time, but I don't need to take care of them right away. So I have this place here where I can kind of put it in one of three contexts. This is a, called a Franken light, Brian Hazard's a creation, and I adapted it for my own needs, but I can put tasks under my content creation and my art, my work, or my home, and I can keep these rolling. They can be assigned to a specific day or they can just be at some point during this month. So when I'm preparing my week, I'm looking at are there things that I have put under here that I need to pull into the week that I thought of previously. So previously I thought of these tasks C and D and so I'll look at those and if they're still relevant I will pull them into my weekly to take care of otherwise I will migrate it later. I want to get better about tracking my thoughts in here instead of using all of the sticky notes that I have all over the place. So if I have a thought of something, oh, I got to get this done later, I have to be honest with myself and not put it in the daily. I want to put it in this monthly log so that I can keep track of it for later. This is kind of like the first week of having these weeklies and incorporating the Moxie Life goal setting. So this is a little bit Mm, redundant right now as I'm trying to figure out what the flow is going to be. So each week, ideally, I will be able to sit and reflect and look back. And then I look at how well I have done with those goals to think about what worked well, what didn't, and then be able to refine what these goals, these goals are going to look like the upcoming week. So still trying to figure that rhythm out so that I'm not just redoing a lot of things in a redundant way. I might have to do this before I write down the tasks in my passion planner. So lesson learned for next time. Here I'm going to get set up for the week. I'm going to try and set that up as a place to be a catch-all. So as I go throughout the week and I think of things like, oh, I got to, you know, this occurs to my mind. I just want a quick place to dump it. I'm going to quick put it into here, into loose categories. Otherwise, if I just do a straight up list, I'm going to lose the context in which it's relevant. And that makes it take longer for me to translate it back to myself at a later point. So hopefully this takes care of my like overload on Monday and be more realistic about my priorities and what time I have to complete those tasks. And then the night before I set up my dailies and what I'll do is leave a chart over on this side. This is going to be for the time and logging things throughout the day in terms of my energy, my feeling, my symptoms or whatever that comes to mind. And in the background, I'll be charting my energy throughout time as well. And then on this side, I'll be doing my most important tasks and then any other tasks that come to mind, some mini journaling, things like that. I'm going to be trying to go back to some of the other tenets of the bullet journal method where it just takes up as much room as it needs. So I'm no longer going to try to constrain it to this much of a page, but I know I'll probably fill it up and then some. I consider this pretty simple. I know that for some people using stickers is already like too much, too much. Sorry, Brian. But to have some decoration is really fun for me. I used to be a scrapbooker and I don't find this to be really super time consuming. So it really works for me. It makes me excited to use my journal. And I hope that you do not feel like you need to be able to do calligraphy or anything like that in order to do your own. So between the combination of my Google Calendar for all of my events, this just for like an overview and honestly even going through this has helped me kind of visualize what my week is going to look and feel like and then adding a place to dump all of the tasks and like little minutia of my day to day. Between all these things, it really works well for me. I don't know if it'll change if I ever go back to the office. Right now, it's pretty easy to have multiple systems happening. But I hope this was helpful for you to see how it is that I go through my weekly planning. Obviously, there's some more tweaks to be had, but I'll be figuring that out as I go. I wanted to show you my process and not just the things that I have for sure 100% figured out. What are the things that you're using in your process? Did any of this make sense? It's kind of hard sometimes when I know it in my mind, but trying to translate it out to you. If you ask questions down below, I'll try to answer them. If you like this, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. If you want to see more of these, let me know. Otherwise, I just hope that you enjoy it. I will see you in my next video. Bye.